Israel has a global image problem, and once again, the state, under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, is blaming the media. Over the past month, foreign journalists have been called before the Knesset to defend themselves against accusations of bias, particularly around their coverage of the protracted violence in Jerusalem and the West Bank. For the domestic news media, there's been a tightening of controls requiring news organizations and even citizen journalists and bloggers to run stories about national security past military censors before publishing or posting. Military censorship is nothing new in the country, but the extent of it certainly is. In parliamentary systems like Israel's, prime ministers will sometimes take on a second portfolio. Some double as ministers of defense or as ministers of finance, depending on where their political priorities lie. Benjamin Netanyahu's decision to double as Israel's minister of communications provides a pretty good idea of how he sees the news media and how important the message is to the future of his government. Our starting point this week is Jerusalem. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is one of those news stories that moves in phases, from full-fledged war in Gaza in 2008, then 2012, and again in 2014. It also goes through diplomatic stages, pauses for peacemaking. Currently, the conflict is in an intifada phase. Palestinian rebellions against occupying Israeli forces began in the late 1980s, flared up again in 2000, and have now come right to the Holy City, what has come to be known as the Jerusalem Intifada. And typically, the Intifada phase coincides with the foreign media covering the story becoming part of the story. Anytime that there's a significant sort of re-entry into the cycle of violence, uh, Israel starts to look bad. And when that happens, the easiest place to look, the easiest place to, to put blame is, is the media. Leveling the Halabi family house was Israel's retaliation for the deadly stabbing attack carried out by one of the Halabi sons. And especially the international media, which tends to take a more nuanced view of them than the Israeli media. If you ask the average Israeli what they think of the foreign press in Israel, they would have always had a negative opinion. Um, but when there's an increase in Palestinian violence against Israelis, the negative feeling towards the foreign press tends to increase because there's more coverage of what's happening in Israel and Israelis feel like it's less fair. And as the press is getting more criticized by the public and even by the Israeli press, then the politicians sort of pick up on that public feeling. And earlier this month, the politicians acted. Foreign journalists were called to testify at a parliamentary subcommittee to answer for some of their work. At issue was a CBS News headline posted online February 3rd, referring to three Palestinians killed by Israeli police. There was no mention that the Palestinians were shot after shooting at Israelis first. Within hours, CBS changed the headline after the foreign ministry accused the network of unprecedented chutzpah and called the headline slanted and false. CBS did not testify before the Knesset members, but the head of the Foreign Press Association, the bureau chief for Reuters, did, telling them that occasional errors and isolated examples do not add up to a systemic bias. All in all, I really fail to see um, that the media has something to answer in terms of bias, systemic bias. If you look back over our own output since the, the, the upsurge in violence that began last October, so over the course of about four and a half months, we had produced, I, I don't know, somewhere in the region of 700 stories. In one case, there was a headline that was inaccurate, and we corrected it. That is an extremely low incidence of error. But if you multiply that by all the news organizations working in this region, to have our error and the four or five that were actually discussed at the hearing and suggest that that's somehow institutional systemic bias against Israel is absurd. It's laughable, in fact. It's possible that Baker sees it that way. However, the level of coverage that Israel gets in the world media and the angle from which it's covered is something that many Israelis see as hostile. I think that, you know, the foreign press are coming from somewhere else and the Israelis are coming from here and the foreign press see it as it's all about Israel's problems, Israel's problems, Israel's problems and the poor Palestinians who are being victims. And that's a problem in coverage because it's not Israel's decision when somebody comes out and decides to stab an Israeli in the supermarket. Israel doesn't have a PR problem. Israel have many times a policy problem. 
and there are just th certain things that you can't explain, even if you have like media that supports you. Israel has a new chief military censor, and it took Ariella Ben Avraham, an army colonel, just a few months to make her mark. She recently issued a directive requiring new media outlets, bloggers, and even certain Facebook users to get clearance from the censors before publishing material on military affairs. That has alarmed Israeli journalists and non-journalists alike, prompting one left-wing Knesset member to ask the Defense Committee to hold hearings on how far the censors can go. Ilan Gilon put it in Orwellian terms. Under the cover of darkness, he said, there is no limit to the expansion of Big Brother. It's really about the censor um, deciding that there are a number of news organizations that are now based online, that are effectively online magazines or online news agencies. And those non-traditional, those new age media, didn't really fall under the military censor. So when a new military censor came in, they decided that they wanted to make sure that they were capturing those organizations too. Another way that the censor is trying to, to control the flow of information is by inserting the, the censor into private messaging groups between official spokespeople and journalists. They want to find out what information the reporters are getting and not just what information they're going to be reporting. So it's like a double layer of self-censorship. Israel uh, was just appointed a new military censor and it seems like she's trying to show her strengths, prove some points, show that she exists. She even like approached people posting things on Facebook, asking them to file military-related topics to her prior to publication. Now we have to see if that would last or if it just like a new sheriff is down trying to show his force. All of this is occurring under Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister who is also Israel's communications minister. The list of Israeli prime ministers who simultaneously oversaw the defense portfolio is long. Names like Ben-Gurion, Begin, Rabin, Perez and Barak. Benjamin Netanyahu is only the second to double as communications minister, which would suggest that he sees controlling the media narrative as critical to the well-being of his coalition government and the defense of the country. Netanyahu holds the communications portfolio, which allows him to have more of an influence on the way the media is regulated in Israel. Netanyahu sees the media as hostile. But as far as his actual impact on the media while he's a man in power, for the most part, I don't think it's been that big. Look, Netanyahu was first, cho was first chosen as prime minister in 1996. He blamed the media for his loss in election in 1999. And I think back then he realized that he does need some media on his side in order to regain control and sustain his control. And it was important for him to change this when he was uh, re-elected last year. And he did appoint himself as the minister of communication. So basically, Netanyahu definitely tries to get more and to gain more control over the media. He always viewed the media as his enemy. The Israeli media Benjamin Netanyahu blamed for his defeat back in 1999 consisted of a half dozen newspapers and fewer television channels. But this is 2016, and Israel is a wired society. And in the age of citizen journalism, the problem with seeing the media as the enemy is that the enemy is everywhere. On the download now, our viewers weigh in on the coverage in and around Israel. I haven't felt any shift towards heightened censorship, neither as a news consumer nor as a person who's given numerous interviews to foreign press as well as to local media. Israel is a true democracy, and the proof in the pudding is precisely all of the satirical shows that are on prime time and uncensored. I have no doubt that if civil, similar programs were recorded in most of our neighboring countries, they would be taken off air and their careers would be finished. So I'm puzzled about this move from the IDF military censor. I mean, what is their real motive here? They can't be so naive to think that censoring blogs will stop information from reaching audiences. Information spreads through networks. If there's an audience for the information, the information will find its way to the audience.